This is Chris Fordyce, Duke Clinical Research Institute Fellow, and I have the pleasure in, with speaking with Dr. Douglas, Pamela Douglas, the Geller Professor of Cardiovascular Research at Duke University today, about the PROMISE trial, which was a trial testing a strategy of anatomical versus functional non-invasive testing in patients with suspected chest pain of cardiac etiology. Dr. Douglas, thank you for speaking with me today. Pleasure to be here. I'd like to ask you first about the rationale and background of this trial, which uh, featured non-invasive non -invasive testing and the fact that it was a comparative effectiveness trial. Well, that's a, there's a lot there. Um, as uh, probably most people know, we have not done large randomized controlled trials in the diagnostic space uh, very often. We tend to save that approach uh, to developing evidence for a new, device, new devices, new drugs, um, or therapeutic strategies rather than diagnostic strategies. So we wanted to explore the diagnostic strategy space because it actually uh, applies to many, many more patients um, than established disease. For example, over 4 million patients in the United States undergo ambulatory stress testing every year for new onset symptoms of stable chest pain, yet we've never done a trial in these patients. Pretty surprising. We also have a range of cardiovascular stress tests to perform, whether it's exercise or pharmacologic, with imaging, without imaging. Um, and we don't really have any information to pick and choose between those two. In fact, the guidelines recommend them all. Uh, and then on top of that, the new information from CT angiography suggests that that technique is more accurate for both the detection and exclusion of obstructive disease than functional testing and it has been proven to be superior to conventional care in the acute chest pain space, the rule out ACS space. So a lot of reasons to want to dig deeper and understand the, the health related benefits of functional or stress testing versus anatomic testing or CTA. That's great. Um, and so tell me a little bit about the patient population enrolled and potentially the, um, the first line results. So the patient population was a, a very solidly intermediate risk population. Uh, only less than 3% had no risk factors. They were all middle-aged, and of course, they were all symptomatic. So they are exactly the population in whom testing is now currently recommended and currently pra practiced, so very relevant to understanding the benefits of tests. Our top-line results were, interestingly enough, uh, very similar between CTA and functional testing uh, for the primary endpoint, which was a composite of death, myocardial infarction, unstable angina hospitalization, and major complications from cardiovascular procedures such as stroke, new renal replacement therapy, or anaphylaxis requiring regurgitation. And um, what did the results show in terms of um, outcomes and um, perhaps secondary outcomes that can help us interpret uh, some, of the, uh, some of the implications? So Chris, with that, with that similarity um, between the two arms and the primary endpoint, we turn to the secondary endpoints to really understand um, the trial. And the uh, first secondary endpoint we turned to was catheterization without evidence of uh, obstructive coronary artery disease or stenosis greater than 50%. And in fact, that was lower in the CT arm than it was in the functional arm, meaning that fewer patients uh, when they were randomized to a strategy of CT first, ended up going to the catheterization lab without obstructive disease. So we think that's a real benefit for patients and enhances utilization of the cath lab as well as patient safety. The second um, uh, uh, subset or sub-result or second secondary result uh, was related to radiation. Again, also a patient safety concern. And in this case, the CT arm overall had slightly higher radiation than the functional testing arm, but that's because uh, fully one-third of the functional test arm had no radiation at all because they, uh, phys their physicians chose an exercise ECG or a stress echo. We did do a pre-randomization specification of the intended functional test, uh, and it, within the stratum of patients who were going to receive a nuclear test, uh, if they were randomized to the functional arm, who were then randomized to CTA. There was actually over two millisieverts less radiation exposure with CT than with nuclear testing. 
So if the choice is between a CT or a stress echo or a CT and an exercise ECG, then of course the CT is going to have higher radiation. However, the choice is between a CT and a nuclear scan, which it was about two-thirds of the patients in Promise and is the dominant strategy in this country now, then the choice for radiation is CT. And in addition to that, we, although not tested in the trial, uh, CT provides a lot of additional information that we hope will prove prognostically useful related to potentially fractional flow reserve, high-risk plaque, and other cardiac abnormalities. Well, that's great. That's a lot of interesting data and a really important trial. Um, but, but the question is, uh, for the practicing clinician um, tomorrow, which test should we be ordering for our patients with suspected cardiac chest pain? I think CT has, has uh, you know, doesn't have superiority, we won't claim that, but it, it seems to be beneficial in, in the other things that we looked at. So less radiation than nuclear, less chance of going to the cath lab with no obstructive disease. I think it's a very viable alternative and the trial has proven that that is totally acceptable as a strategy in patients with chest pain. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Douglas, for taking the time to speak to us today about the PROMISE trial uh, presented at ACC. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. This is Chris Fordyce, uh, DCRI Fellow. Uh, for more uh, late-breaking trials and other information, uh, please log in to the Duke Cardio uh, Cardiology Fellows blog.